not deny that I'm jealous of this engine and I really hope Ford has something in the pipeline to, to up their game. Well, you know, obviously I'm a huge Ford fan. Let's start out that way. I've done Fords my whole life. I've never really been like a GM or anti-Dodge guy, but I've always chosen Ford, especially since the Coyote came out. To me, it's a clear advantage, dual overhead cam and all that sort of stuff. The technology is what has always drawn me to Ford. But now with the C8 Z06 Corvette, we have a dual overhead cam engine from GM. And, you know, at first I wasn't even all that excited about it. Then I did some digging, you know, I wanted to see what they had uh, based compared to Ford. There's some really big differences and the best way to show you that is maybe with a Dynograph. We might have a Z06 Dynograph. We're gonna show you that compared to the GT350 uh, and what I think it's gonna look like when we compare them for real. Uh, but first I wanna go over the engine itself and how it differs so enormously compared to a GT350 engine or any four dual or head cam engine. And the reason for that is the pedigree, okay? And that's one of the biggest things people uh, fail to realize here in comparing these two engines. That's the instant comparison, of course, as soon as it came out. Well, yes, the GT350 is the highest horsepower, naturally aspirated Mustang ever released, but it's still based off of mass production architecture, right? You know, it was born probably from, we'll say the mod motor, the, the first overhead cam engines from Ford, and it's worked up over the years. It's been in trucks, it's always been in trucks. Ford has taken it, and now we have the TI VCT, which is four independent uh, camshafts. We have onboard wide bands and four knock sensors and all this stuff and things that we were super happy about. But that sort of add on to the architecture. It wasn't built from the ground up as a race engine. Now you take the C8 Z06, and after looking at that, that is a race engine in disguise. There's so much going on there, uh, you know, I don't even know where to start. So we'll start with the power. Um, a GT350 is, depending on the year and everything, is in the 420 or the 520s and 429 on the torque. It makes peak horsepower at 7,500 RPM and peak torque at 4,750. Now compare that to this new LT6 and we get 670 horsepower peaking all the way at 8,400 RPM. You're talking 900 RPM higher on the peak torque. But interestingly enough, it's only about 31 more torque. And that's because this is a high revving race engine. Um, there's so much more uh, to talk about. A wet sump versus dry sump, that's power. There's safety involved in that for road racing, of course, but you're gonna make more power with a dry sump setup. Um, the big, big one is the architecture of the motor or what I would say the layout of the engine, the bore and stroke. That is huge news that I don't think anybody's talking about right now. It looks like, and who knows, you know, I don't have an engine in my hands, but based on the bore and stroke of that engine, we could probably go really large with this LT6 as compared to, uh, you know, a coyote based engine can't go that large. Uh, the bore on a GT350 is 3.7. The bore on a C8 Z06 is 4.1. That's a huge difference. Yet, it's not that much larger of an engine. Why? Because the stroke is a half an inch less, almost 366 versus 315. So all that leads to things that, you know, there was a time I, I don't even know if I should admit this, but there was a time where I said, man, if somebody could take a Coyote engine and just make it a little bit bigger, larger bore spacing, like 4.4 in this engine. Uh, so let's say you could go up a little larger on bore and a lot larger on stroke. Are we talking about something in like the 6.5 liter range dual overhead cam engine here? I don't know. It's very, very possible. Um, you know, the other big thing to compare is intake manifolds. On a GT350, we have a slightly modified stockish production plastic intake, uh, you know, which all this is great engineering, but I feel like Ford did it with their hands tied, building off of a mass production architecture where, you know, this case, this is probably born from, you know, the C8 race car. So, uh, the intake manifold is dual throttle body, but then it has a balance set of three other throttle bodies. So it's like five throttle bodies trying to tune the air going through this thing. Uh, the really big thing, and I actually made a post on Facebook about this, that is super concerning to me for 
a regular person that might buy this car and just keep it and do nothing to it is the valve train. So now let me back up a second. Almost everything I'm commenting on in this engine as a race person and person who likes to take a vehicle and take it apart instantly and try to make more power, this engine is awesome news, at least from what I can tell. There's so much going on there that's already awesome about the engine. It's things you might wanna to do to say a stock Coyote engine. But the difference is, it also makes it much more racier. So now you've got solid valve train and that's my biggest concern. So on say a Mustang, we have hydraulic lash adjusters, which will account for uh, any kind of tolerances in the engine. And you don't have to have perfect valve lash because the hydraulics take that up. And most engines are that way. Uh, push rod engines have a similar type of thing. Uh, some imports don't do that. They use lash caps, but they take uh, maintenance and you have to do adjustments and you know there's scheduled maintenance what's different here is GM has said we're gonna set up a solid valve train computer measure the shims that this stuff needs to be a hundred percent perfect and for the life of the vehicle you never have to change it that I mean that doesn't sound possible to me but maybe it is to me that sounds like they're setting themselves up for failure for maintenance and the regular customer who's going to buy the car and you know drive it every once in a while and he's going to have a noisy valve train after 20,000 miles and you know now what do you have to take the engine out to fix it now from a race perspective this architecture is great news and the other really big thing to consider here is the price of the car a gt350 starts at $59,000 and the new z06 starts at 90 but most likely you'll never see one at, at 90 so you know you're talking what is that 50% more right off the bat so if we were to take a gt350 and build it as a true race inspired motor and had 30 more thousand dollars to do it with i think we could be right there with them but like i said the big difference is the architecture you can only go so big with a modular you can only go so far with it this brings a much larger dual overhead cam engine to the domestic market that i'm really excited about all right now what you've all been waiting for a c8 z06 dynograph do I have one? No, I don't. But based on what they've told us, I can come up with a pretty good idea of what it will look like, and that's what we're gonna show you. So you may ask, like, how did I come up with this? Well, we do know that it makes uh, 670 horsepower at 8,400 RPM, and it makes 460 torque at 6,300. Okay, so if we know that number, we also know the horsepower because horsepower is derived from torque. So we know this horsepower number is correct here, and we know this horsepower number is correct here. So all this in between is made up, okay? It could go like this, or it could go like that. Uh, it just really depends. Now, from this point down, this is best case scenario, roughly, of what they can give. It could be lower, but it also can't be higher because we know peak torque. So I set this horsepower at about the highest you can get without going over peak torque because obviously if that was higher, then that would be peak torque. So that's pretty much what we have. And I'd say that's probably pretty accurate. Now, that doesn't tell us too much unless we have a car to compare it to. So now we're gonna compare it to a real GT350. Now this was derived from a stock run on our dyno, which is rear wheel horsepower, and then we converted it to crank horsepower by bringing the peak number uh, to the quoted power. We're not really worried about a few horsepower here or there. We're talking about um, the, the shape of the curve and what, what we're dealing with. So up here, that's where all the power gains are. It's huge. This is a dream power curve, if my curve for the Z06 is correct. I would kill to have this car and maybe someday I will. But if you're just driving around, which who buys these cars to just drive around? But if you're just driving around, you know, the GT350 in both horsepower and torque will most likely have that beat. The reason we know this is like I said earlier, this blue line, which is the Z06 horsepower, cannot be any higher because that would cause the peak torque to go up higher than quoted. And the green line is definitely right because this was derived off of a actual dyno run. And this matches up with Ford's quoted peak torque, uh, which 
you know, um, a GT350 peak torque is at 4750, which is this number right here, the purple. And then the Z06 peak torque is way out here. So you're talking, you know, 1500 plus RPM difference in peak torque. And that may be bad news for a lot of people, but not for me, because that all gets taken care of in gearing and this type of car, you don't want a ton of torque. This is really gonna be an insanely awesome car. This could be probably a great platform to build a race dual or head cam engine in. And we're probably a long ways out before that because the car's gotta come out. People are gonna be paying insane markups. There's a lot to do to get to that point. We pro we're probably talking five, to eight years down the road before anybody's really hardcore messing with these, maybe less, but <clears throat> we've got a while. But I can not deny that I'm jealous of this engine and I really hope Ford has something in the pipeline to, to up their game, really. And it comes down to the architecture of the engine at the end of the day, displacement, bore spacing, all those things. That's the only thing that's been locking down the Coyote for this long and hopefully Ford can address it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to our channel if you like it. We do mostly Ford stuff, but we do all domestics. Uh, like it, share it with your friends, and we'll see you on the next one.